Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a 1v1 for you today on Villa Fiore, Planet's Axis. We have Umyrim Bra from France with the Wehrmacht, rank number 49. He's up against Jeff G from South Korea using the US forces, rank number 39. This is a pretty awesome back and forth battle. Jeff G tries something interesting at the start, doesn't really work out for him, uh, and switches up tactics from there. That's really all I got. On to the video. Here we go. Starting. And on the east side, bottom of the screen in blue, is Umyrimbra, or UMB as I'm going to call him. Uh, getting the second pioneer and building his tier 1 out. Meanwhile, up on the west side, or top of the map, we have Jeff G in red, getting an engineer out and going for his barracks opening. Uh, no initial battle group choices, although... Huh, Jeff G going advanced infantry uh, and getting a jeep out. UMB going for his first grenadier. Uh, so we'll see how he plays this. Uh, this is pretty interesting. Jeff G is someone who's known for using very, very optimized builds, right? So pre 1.8, someone you saw use the Panzer Grenadier headquarters from Wehrmacht with uh, eight rods and pack 40s really, really effectively. So I'm interested in seeing how he approaches this here. And you kind of see the baseline capping order pioneers spreading out to the side same thing with the americans and then the grenadier pushes through the middle he doesn't i guess he doesn't hear the jeep the jeep's coming to contest this fuel oh and now umb going luftwaffe these pioneers here gonna hop in a green cover yeah without the uh initial veterancy from the armored battle group this jeep it can do some damage but it can't decap this fuel now we're going to see Grenadiers on the flank. Pioneers doing decent damage to the Jeep. Even at range with those SMGs. A second squad of Grenz out and Jeff G working on his first squad of rifles. Now the Jeep kind of cornered here. Maybe it's going to continue to kite. Pioneers somehow not in cover but also not taking any damage. Now here Grenz on the flank. Jeff G's got to be careful. Oh, look at this little juke move. I keep waiting for this thing to go. <laughs> oh, this Jeep. What's it thinking? Oh, he's going to back it all the way up. Okay. Running through the vineyard here. Meanwhile, Grenadiers push off scouts. Uh, scouts take a lot of health damage, but don't drop, drop any models. Jeep here, trying to get some repairs in, but now targeted by the base HMG once the Pioneers spot it. Oh, and this Jeep might be done. Wow. So close to being a good, a good play there. Just not able, doesn't realize he's in range with that base MG. Now these Grens, extremely low health. Yeah, they're forced to retreat. Good push with the rifles. UMB going for that tier 1 officer's quarters. Both sides being very deliberate. We're seeing a lot of sandbags go down. A little bit of wire. Okay, so this Pioneer squad is going to pick up a flamethrower. Yeah, UMB using his first kind of wadded up bundle of fuel on that veteran scene. Meanwhile, Jeff G hasn't made a choice yet. He probably wants more units on the field first. Uh, pioneers. Yeah, I mean, it's... Oh, the merge, because the flamethrower's got to pop soon. There it is. And now the rifles. Oh, man. You kind of wish they had had just a little bit more patience. But now, with all these grins hitting vet 1, and these, <laughs> these riflemen... Oh, no. Engineers pick up a Pioneer on the flank. Meanwhile, this engagement in the center going very well uh, for UMB. He pushes both the rifles back. And Jeff G, yeah, I was wondering when he was going to do this. Getting the uh, the medic tent up for the healing, which he needs to avoid bleed. He's got a third rifle squad out. UMB now building an MG42. And these Gren squads kind of healing on the move. Here we go. The next engagement is they find this rifle squad. But Jeff G somehow has done a good job and he's pushed UMB off of his fuel. 
Man, this volleyed rifle fire. <laughs> how? How with 15 guys shooting at 5 have they not killed? There we go. Rifle squad finally gonna retreat. Now MG42 forces off the engineers before they're able to cap uh, that fuel. Pioneers on the flank working on this plus 16 munitions. They're about to get uh, hit by these two rifle squads, so they're almost done there. Um, these engineers might drop a model, which we have not a ton to worry about right now. Yeah, Pioneers just retreat. MG42 is going to capture this fuel. Alright, and now, so we're going to see the Panzer Grenadier Company from UMB. Now, Jeff G going for the Mechanized Support Center, and he's he's got the Ranger conversion available to him. Interesting that he's going for the Mechanized Support Center with the Rangers. Only three rifle squads. He's got tons of fuel. So we can see a motor pull here shortly. Rifle squad advancing on Grand's in cover, and they're able to close the distance, only dropping one model on approach. Here's a grenade from the Grenadiers. A uh, little bit of a dodge, but they take a lot of chunk damage and are eventually forced off. Now the MG42 and Pioneer rotating over. They find the scouts. MG42 is going to set up. The scouts are rushing to get behind the sight blocker. Oh, not enough suppression, but the Grenadier is going to hop in this garrison here. And so now we've got this like, little standoff around this wall. Scouts retreat. Another Gren squad shows up. And now Panzer Grenadier is coming out for UMB. Engineer is forced away. But look at this aggressive capping by Jeff G. He's going to maintain a fuel advantage for quite a while. Uh, he's a little down on VPs. Uh, about to be more pressure on. And army composition... Well, there we go. There's the first squad of Rangers on the field. Okay, so interesting to see what he does here with these Rangers. But UMB's got the right... Plan to counter it though with the uh, Panzer Grenadiers on the field and then a 251 half track on the way for probably the Stummel. Now, here's the flank from the Rangers. Can they? I don't think they're gonna be able to close fast enough with that MG42. So, the Rangers are actually gonna back off. A mortar out now for Jeff G to counter the MG42, which is smart. What he's lacking though is hard AT and this is almost certainly to become a, yeah it's already on the way to become a Schumel. Now pack 40 coming out as well so UMB with a much more balanced build here. Ranger's gonna grab this fuel point and then back down here. And good push through the middle here these Grenadiers may be able to find this mortar. FG floating a ton of fuel right now. Actually, he's not far off from a tank depot. But that's a long time to go without AT. Nice little uh, wide route here from the scout to get after this fuel. Now here's MG42. We're going to see the tier 3 veteran see now as well from UMB. Which is just going to help across the board. Oh, these rangers are going to bleed a ton if they don't move. They finally retreat. Oh, one rifle squad pinned. Oh, wow. First round does a ton of damage. MG42. Now the rifles sprint. And they pick up the MG42. This is dangerous though. Uh, we, he may lose the rifle squad and the MG42 on retreat. Oh, the Stummel annihilates the picked up MG42. Nice smoke. I like the idea with the smoke. And so the rifle squad will get away. Not totally free. 
Here we go. The first weapon crate's coming in for the Rangers. Yeah, and Jeff G going straight for the tank depot. So this is something that uh, a few of us are worried might happen after the light vehicle patch is just the tier one to tier four skip. Mortar able to brush him in the base. There's Stummel also targeting this rifle squad. Uh, the Rangers, it looks like they got a 1919 and that's it. Huh. Well, that's unfortunate. I mean, that'll help with a little bit at range with the Grenadiers. But I think you're hoping for either a flamethrower or a nice flank from the scouts. The scouts are really at risk, though, with all these Grens here. Oh, boy. Another squad of Panzer Grenadiers hits the field. Scouts, oh my gosh, nope. They're gonna get gunned down by the Grenadiers at range on the move. Now here come Rangers in to challenge the Panzer Grenadiers. They've already used their veteran C ability. So this may be a good engagement for these Rangers. Oh, I say that. Uh, Stummel, first round comes in, knocks out one. Another model drops. Meanwhile, the Pigran is just happy to hang out here in green cover. Well, that Stummel hit so hard. And without advanced logistics, those Rangers are going to bleed. So Jeff G doing really good in terms of fuel. Oh, these engineers, they just have to retreat immediately. All right, so Jeff G's unlocked the boys. All right, that assault push. And it looks like he's going to use munitions for now for weapons drops. Meanwhile, UMB, look at this really nice, balanced uh, mid-game build here. He's got a pack 40, he's MG42, a lot of infantry, five, five mainline squads, two pioneers, uh, and then the Stummel. And he's going to go for the healing bunker in his base, uh, which is really nice, especially because he's floating the munitions. UMB finally getting his own fuel back, and now he's going to be able to stand on Jeff G's, which he really needs to do. I don't know if he's aware that Jeff G is, you know, 12 fuel away from getting a Sherman out. The pack 40 is a decent counter that, but just one. Oh, the mine. Yeah, Rangers force off by Pigrens. And I love how UMB is keeping his Grenadiers in support for the Panzer Grenadiers and the Pioneers for the merge. Meanwhile, rifle squads up top uh, forced off by the MG42 and the Stummel. Looks like uh, another uh, LMG for the Ranger squad and then a BAR that was handed off to one of these rifle squads here. Yeah, Panzer Grenadiers. It's crazy. They just dominate all the infantry on the map. Um, I don't know. Because I don't think there was a significant change uh, in 1.8. But they just feel so dominant. Um, you know, kind of crossing the open and just absorbing a lot of damage. Alright, UMB finally getting his tier 4 out now as well. And this is the danger of the Luftwaffe battle group, is you just don't get the same late game armor for the Vermont. Now, I mean, Panzer IV and uh, uh, Brumbear are decent, but you don't have access. There's no upgrade, there's no upgun that you can get, like the Americans with the 7.6mm Sherman. Oh, that mine hits pretty hard. It's set off by a mortar round. Man, these Panzer Grenadiers, 1v boring right now and they take a bunch of damage but don't drop any models and that's right there that's the frustration with Panzer Grenadiers in their current state so now a Sherman hits the field pioneers tangle with engineers on the opposite side of the map and so Jeff G's infantry push gonna work here come the boys oh sm the machine gun is smoked and so these infantry are gonna be able to push really far up 
now they're targeting an MG42. MG42 forced to retreat. Oh, good push here. Sherman on the flank. Finally, something these pins are going to do is can't deal with. Yeah, and this boy's infantry blob going to set up here. Grenadier's just going to absorb some veterans in here. Now, how did these squads get split up? I'm confused as to how that happened. But crazy, UMB forced to just fight and use a Schimmel Barrage just to leave his own base. The boy's getting knocked out, but honestly, you can see Jeff G's taking a lot of map control back. Meanwhile, UMB just bottled all the way up. He's got a second pack out now to deal with the Sherman. Now, six command points. Um, he could definitely, with this much infantry, he should definitely go for the Luftwaffe reserves. That 25% reduction in reinforcement cost is huge. MG42, but those Rangers are in heavy cover. Alright, now we found the Sherman. Packs are going to relocate to try to set up on it. Rangers back out before they take too much damage from these Grens up top. Oh my gosh, this Grenadier platoon. Mortar's going to take a bunch of damage as well. A uh, little bit of a late grenade there. Now, the Sherman's going to rotate over, try to do some damage to these Grenadiers. Another rifle squad forced off, so UMB going to be able to move back out on the field and take quite a bit of map control. Jeff G was able to get the triple cap on briefly. He is way down on VPs to UMB right now. Here, Panzer Grenadiers, they're going to hop into cover here. Now Panzer IV on the way out for UMB. Yeah, Panzer Grenadiers taking mortar rounds. They're forced to back off. This infantry blob moving across. P they're just going to keep running to P Grins and cover. Jeff G going for another rifle squad. Pioneers forced off. Meanwhile, opposite here, these Grenadiers going to tangle with these engineers trying to recap uh, their own fuel. Stummel's in to support these Panzer Grenadiers. Yeah, and the Rangers and Rifles retreat before they drop too many models. And this Sherman so far has been very ineffective. And now with the Panzer IV on the field in these two pack 40s, uh, he's going to need a buddy here. He's going to do anything else. Now, UMB, yeah, he thinks about the Tier 4 officers' quarters and then thinks better of it. Jeff G going for the cutoff here. Yeah, now Panzer IV forces him away. UMB selects the entire left side of his, uh, his tree here, so he's got the loiter available to him. This Grenadier squad, again, takes a ton of damage, but not, not really dropping any models. And so UMB not feeling a ton of manpower blade. There we go. That squad starts to drop a little bit, but the Panzer IV is there to support. Grenadiers here recapping the fuel. These Pegrins here in cover, they're going to tangle with these Rangers. We have two LMGs right now. And UMB instead going to go for the armored skirts. One rifle squad braves the middle of the field. Yeah, it's immediately pushed off. Rangers using the cover to cover to try to tangle with the Pegrins. And now the Pegrins, the green cover not working for them. They may actually, yeah, they're getting forced away by the Rangers. The Stummel shows up to support, but just a little too late, trying to throw an attack round in. Now, two Shermans out on the field. And then infantry assault on the way. So we'll see if Jeff G does 
similar to last time, uses this infantry assault to kind of bottle up uh, UMB and take control of these VPs. This MG42 is still here. So, like last time, you think he'd want to smoke it. But yeah, here comes the assault. And P4 finds the Rangers. They're not really equipped to support, but two Shermans rolling up. Two shots coming on the Grenadiers, but do no damage. Uh, this MG42 is perfectly positioned to take on these infantry, and the Stummel just going to farm veterancy. Meanwhile, rifles on the flank with some Shermans. The Shermans focusing on the P4. The Pack 40s are out of position. And looks like they're going to try to chase this... Oh, that shot bounces. There we go. There's a hit. Pack 40 is now backed up. Probably in a position to support. The wounded Sherman's going to back up. Not enough to finish off the P4. Jeff G instead now going to focus on the Stummel. Oh, Pack 40 salvo comes in. And now the white phosphorus. Uh, a couple of good attack rounds for the Pack 40, but they miss. Here's the rest of the infantry assault just to challenge these pack boys. Grenadiers forced off. Man, look at the KD. I know some of that is the uh, the boys' automated assault, but 73 to 40 in favor of UMP. And the VPs, uh, even though right now Jeff G's got an advantage, slight advantage with two. He's got, uh, it's 400 to 130. So really UMB just needs one, one good push to take some VP control. He's opted to send one of his, uh, Grenadier squads in for a squad of Panzer Grenadiers, which I think makes sense, uh, tangling with these riflemen with, with BARs now. It looks like we're not going to see, I, I'm interested to see if, uh, Jeff G converts any more of these rifle squads for Rangers. The Ranger squad hasn't been as effective as you'd like so far, from an elite infantry perspective. Here's the P4 knocking down some cover, clearing sight blockers for the MG42 and the Pac 40. <laughs> He's just running all this over. Clearing it out once, clear lines of sight, which makes sense when you're relying on team weapons. These Panzer Grenadiers here. So he's gotten off the triple cap. Now, Jeff G setting up for a flank. The Shermans are fully healed. He's got enough fuel for the 76 mil upgrade. Also, I wonder if he's even using the uh, the automated heal that you get with the mechanized support center. Available. Doesn't look like it. Now Jeff G teching grenades, so he's going to invest into these rifles a little bit. Alright, engineer's going to explore the center. They're going to take a lot of fire. Another P4 on the way. Jeff G, with this flank with the rifles, forces off these grenadiers. The opposite flank... Not going to see as much success between the P4 and the Panzer Grenadiers. Uh, another infantry assault on the field. Mortar does a ton of damage to one squad of P-Grens. Here come the other... Oh, wow. Look at this. Nice converging push here. And this central position for UMB in serious danger. There's going to be a bundle on the boys. We'll do a ton of damage. Look at all those XP kickers. Oh, but the rifle flank on the MG42 forces it away. The second P4 hits the field just in time. Pack 40s forced to back up yet again. Stummel has to back up to avoid getting bombarded by the Shermans. Now the Pack 40s will set up. Good salvo. First Sherman forced to back way up. But the boys here are going to really threaten these Pack 40s. Especially with the bazookas. P4 is farming some veterancy here. And then the boy's going to retreat. But man, good push from Jeff G. Look at all this map control that he's got. And now we're seeing the 76 mil upgrade for those Shermans. Oh, 
Yeah, that's going to make a big difference. You can be able to at least grab this VP to reduce kind of the rate of pressure. Oh my gosh, these Panzer Grenadiers. Rangers, get out of there. UMB pushing up with the Panzer IVs. He's got a window, right? It's about two minutes between, uh, you know, when the boys can show up. And Jeff G has tons of munitions, so I think he realizes he's got to push quickly. German reacts a little bit slowly to the P4 push. A couple of good hits here. P4 is focused on this mortar. Oh, that mortar is done. And now, yeah, Rifleman forced off almost immediately. I like this. The aggressive push from the P4s, and uh, Jeff G doesn't know, but these two pack 40s here, he can get really aggressive. Oh, he's going to knock out this mortar. Oh, the bodies of the crew just desecrated. Sorry, homies. Jeff G's got a nice flank on with the rifles, but UMB is going to grab the center and the south BP. Jeff G has excellent fuel control here. And it looks like he's gone for the, the call-in artillery barrage. I think that's fair. It doesn't... I don't feel like he's going to have the spare resources to build the howitzer. But he does have the munitions. Alright, here we go. Big push in on these Panzer Grenadiers. Yeah, instead of uh, triggering their veterancy, they, they bounce away. Now Panzer IV is making a push on the north VP. All these rifles clumped up. And they just immediately retreat. The UMB going to be able to maintain the VP advantage here. Now, 76 mil Shermans, two of them. A uh, half track coming from Jeff G. I wonder what he's going to do with that. Maybe. Probably not forward healing. Maybe for the barrage to replace the lost mortar. Panzer Grenadier is forced off. Yeah, UMB is fully pop capped. 99. Here we go. Big engagement. Supported by the boys push. Oh. Well, the Luftwaffe Loiter comes in. Yeah, he does go for the same time. Oh my gosh. The first burst from the Loiter really cuts down this assault and the Sherman's forced back and out of the circle here someone's gonna force the Rangers away oh well the P4s and the Panzer Grenadiers P4s knock out the Ranger squad with a combined volley holy cow you may see another rifle squad go down here at range from the Panzer Grenadiers to pick up the 1919 oh the Vet3 Stummel Still in danger. Oh, trade shots with the 75 mil upgraded half track, but loses. He grins. Yeah, gunned down another rifle squad on retreat. And now the P4 is to push. Look at that chunk damage. And now UMB looks like he's going to get the triple cap here. It's a lot of pressure. The Shermans are still in good shape. But the remainder of Jeff G's forces... Little beat up now with the two pack 40s here. Oh, this rifle squad push in the center. And here comes the rapid artillery barrage. The pack 40s could be in trouble. First round. Good impact. Oh, no. Both are cleared. P4 is a one is about to go down here. Get a nice snare from the rifle squad. First P4 goes down. Panzer Grenadier is moving to support from the infantry, but with these 76 mil Shermans pushing, P4 knocks out one of the Shermans, but dies itself. Another P4 on the way for UMB. He's been floating tons of resources. Meanwhile, this Sherman is engine critted, and Jeff G's going to throw in the towel. I guess with, with the triple cap, he had nothing left. Okay, so starting off with Jeff G to kind of do the build order review here. Obviously starts with the scouts, then he goes engineer into barracks, selects the advanced infantry battle group right away, which is kind of an interesting choice because you don't get anything at zero CPs from this battle group. So even if I, I think if you want to play this way and play this build, uh, there's no real reason to lock it in. You can wait and see you've got a command point. 
Granted, you get some space uh, and some ability to micro early on without a whole lot of stuff going on. Um, but I think it's just interesting that he chooses that right away and forces himself to play that way rather than giving him some space to react to his opponent. Uh, he gets a Jeep out. Um, really cheeky play with it. Ends up not working out for him, but I like the idea. Uh, three rifles, then a med station, uh, and then he goes mechanized support center, which I think, uh, just based on the battle group and the kind of way this plays out, is really to get the 76 mil upgrade on the Shermans. Um, from there, he converts one of his rifle squads into rangers, gets an M1 mortar team to deal with MG42 once it hits the field. Then he goes straight into tier four of the tank depot, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, gets a, a third squad of riflemen out, um, gets his first Sherman out, then gets two more rifle squads and a second Sherman. So he's playing, uh, trying to mass generalist units here, um, which again, we'll talk about later, but this is generally kind of his strategy. At this point, I think he's decided like the Rangers aren't working for him. So since he's got five rifles on the field, he's going to invest into the rifles a little bit. So this is when you see the BAR tech, uh, the sixth rifle squad, which is insane to me. Uh, and then the grenade package, right, to help them try to scale against the Panzer Grenadiers doesn't really work. Uh, then late in the game, he backtacks to the weapon support center. This is something I wish players would do more often. Again, it's 100 manpower and 10 fuel. It doesn't set you back, but it gives you so many more options to play with, which I really like. Um, then he goes for the, uh, the M4A176 mil conversion. He's still got those two Shermans on the field. This upguns them a little bit. Um, I, I like this. This is the, the main reason... Uh, that people go mechanized support center other than the, the rearm and retrofit. Uh, and then he gets a, the 75 mil gun motor carriage out from that weapon support center. He can build it directly because of the mechanized support center. I think this is a combination of some extra AT on the field plus the desire to replace the mortar with the barrage ability. I like this thought. Um, late in the game, maybe a third Sherman might have been helpful, but for bridging the gap and getting some indirect makes a lot of sense. Uh, for the battle group, Obviously unlocks the Rangers. He goes for the designated assault position, which he doesn't use, uh, but he also doesn't need the forward healing since he has a med station in his base and it's a 1v1, so the forward healing is not as useful. Uh, and then he goes for the, the infantry assault, the boys, the NPCs, uh, which he uses several times really, really well. Uh, later, he unlocks the artillery observers, which again, he doesn't really use. Same thing with the M2A1 howitzer. And then because he's floating a lot of munitions and he's not going to build the emplacement, he goes for the 155 uh, rapid fire barrage, which he uses well uh, to knock out the pack 40s, but it doesn't help him close out the game. All right, and now looking at uh, UMB here, uh, double pioneer opening straight into infantry company with grenadiers. Also locks in the Luftwaffe battle group early, but doesn't necessarily like use anything from it except for the the loiter at the end of the game. So interesting choice. Uh, you know, I kind of wonder what his thought process was there. Um, Gets, uh, ends up getting three total grenadiers, gets the tier one officer's quarters for the veteran C, gets an MG42 out. When you see a lot of rifles, MG42 is a great way to zone out part of the map. He does a really good job supporting his pioneers and his machine gun with the grenadiers, using the merge, using the heal. Um, so good play across the board here. Then he goes for tier three, the Panzer Grenadier Company, gets his first squad of Panzer Grenadiers out, gets a Stummel out, which is a great, great counter uh, to rifle and ranger heavy play. Uh, gets his first AT gun out, uh, goes for the veteran C at tier three as well, which is really, really important for the Panzer Grenadiers. It gives them access to their vet one ability right away, which can allow them to basically 1v2 rifle squads, even with BARs. Uh, gets a second Panzer Grenadier squad, replaces a lost pioneer, gets the med bunker. We've talked about this uh, a bunch, but using the med bunker gives you the casualty clearing as opposed to the general healing aura upgrade from the HQ. Um, then he gets his tier four out, gets a second AT gun, and then he starts investing into Panzer IV. So he gets his first Panzer IV, unlocks the side skirts. Um, he's starting to get pop capped here, and this is a good use of resources to give him some extra durability. Uh, takes one of his Grenadier squads and converts it to a third Panzer Grenadier. I really like this, especially as Jeff G starts to mass rifles. The P Grens are really able to, to stay with the rifles and push them off, whereas the Grenadiers start to use start to lose their utility late in the game gets a second panzer four out and then at the end of the game when he loses one uh, he goes to replace it uh with a with another panzer four on the battle group side um so unlocks the false Pios right away and then does the rest of his unlocks in kind of like one big window makes sense this is a really aggressive like micro heavy game goes for the strafing run doesn't use it goes for the false Jaegers, doesn't use them 
uh, unlocks the loiter. Uh, probably the best loiter in the game. Does a lot of work uh, under its cover. He's able to knock out a ranger squad and a rifle squad as well as deal with an NPC assault. So uh, good use there. Uh, doesn't use the LG40s. The, the biggest thing here, and I'll talk about a little bit more later, uh, is he doesn't unlock the Luftwaffe manpower reserves. And I think that's kind of the only misplay from him. If you look at his unit composition late in the game, he's only got one vehicle and it's the Stummel. Everything else are team weapons, infantry. Um, you want to talk about the best way to deal with a U.S. forces infantry heavy front is to, especially when you have your own infantry, is to get the manpower cost reduction. Um, ends up not needing it. He closes out the game. Uh, Jeff G surrenders. Uh, after he loses his uh, 76 mil Sherman and a bunch of his infantry. Um, but that's the breakdown for UMB here. All right, so as I think about this game, uh, there's not as much from the map. Uh, you know, it's one of the things I made deep dive Villa Fiore at a later time. Um, I think it's less of a mapism and more of a strategy piece. So Jeff G clearly had a strategy coming in. He was going to go for aggressive fuel control and use uh, tier one, with the rangers to try to push into tier four and then um his he's very good at microwing across the map so i think what he wanted if you look at his build is a lot of generalist units so it doesn't matter what he has where he can just kind of manage the fight across the battlefield that's why you see good lord six rifles right the ranger squad that's why you start to see uh shermans at the end again the 76 mil upgrade it's a generalist tank um I think the Sherman needs a little bit of love, but this is the downside to going with generalists. And I think the way the balance is currently, with the exception of like the grant, um, the Shermans underperform compared to an equivalent number of resources of like a bulldozer and a Hellcat or two, right? Um, as they should, right? Generalist units should not be as good as specialist units, but it's just interesting that he chooses to play that way. Um, the thing is, it works, at least initially. So fantastic fuel control. He is building his tier four by nine and a half minutes in the game, right? That's really aggressive timing. Um, and fortunately for UMB, he's kind of ready for it. He's got a pack 40 on the field. He's got enough grenadiers for snares. Um, this is probably the issue with trying this with USF. The USF tanks are not the power spike that you're expecting. Like if you get a tank out at the 11 minute mark, you really need it to drive some things home for you. And I don't think the Sherman is that power spike. Um, so it, it's decent, but again, like he doesn't really even, he's not really even able to move around and um, have the impact that he wants uh, without the second Sherman on the field. The next piece of this is like, he's now he's essentially behind on VPs because he's focused so hard on manipulating the fuel balance in the game that he ends up giving up a little bit of the VP battle. And now he's on the back foot. But because of the way he's played, he's essentially made it a late game uh, 1v1. So he's playing like a late game strategy, but behind on VPs, which is really risky. Um, I think, you know, he obviously like pivots his strategy mid game in terms of uh, going from Rangers to rifles. I think if you want to play Rangers, especially 1v1, they, you got to go ISC uh, for the advanced logistics. And then what you do is you use a weapon support center and the half tracks to kind of bridge you into tier four and manage the mid game, manage the light vehicles, manage the advanced infantry. You need the advanced logistics to make Rangers viable. And I think you kind of see that like, cause they come out as Panzer Grenadiers are hitting the field. They just don't have the impact. They spend a lot of time like retreating back to headquarters. The Stummel does a lot of damage to him, keeps him from being super effective. He doesn't get the weapons drops that he wants. He keeps getting like the long range LMGs for the Rangers. And I think that's why you see he's eventually just like, ah, screw it. Uh, Rangers aren't working for him. I'm going to go uh, heavy into rifles. Speaking of which, six rifle squads plus Rangers, like, yeah. Uh, I think we all kind of feel the same way. It's more of a shame that the USF are, like, forced into this rifle heavy build. Like, I, I feel like I, I just wish there were more viable options at the high level uh, for them to play differently. And with the light vehicle nerfs in 1.8, um, it's just so much harder to do and harder to sustain, especially once the pack 40s hit the field, man. Like the Greyhounds, they just get chewed up. Grenadiers with the, the Panzerfaust, like um, the Stummel with the White Phosphorus round. It, it just doesn't feel as viable. So you're forced to play with these rifles and just try to out micro your opponent, which uh, fair enough, he almost does. 
But what's more insane to me is that there, despite the casualty numbers, there isn't enough bleed to keep him from continuing to build rifle squads. So uh, a little wild there. Um, obviously, great use of, of the boys, the NPC assault, um, shoving UMB right back into his base a couple of times. And he uses that to buy space to kind of grab up the VP since he's behind. Uh, almost works for him, um, but not quite. For UMB, uh, so I love the balance in his army composition. Eventually, he pivots really hard into anti-infantry and just a reaction to what Jeff G is doing. But if you look at kind of the way he's built, three grands, then uh, an MG42, then a you know, Panzer Grenadier, Pack 40, Stummel. Like, he's built to handle whatever Jeff G is going to throw at him. This requires really good micro. It requires really good awareness of where you need to position your units on the map. So that your MG42 is always in the right position, your packs are always in the right position. Um, but really well done. Excellent use of the Stummel. Um, I think this is one of the best counters to American rifle and Ranger heavy play, especially because they don't have like the boys AT rifles. So um, you know you can take a couple shots at them, and as long as you kite them, you're not gonna eat up too much damage. And then once you get the pack 40 support, you can eat up those infantry, but he can't really dive you with light vehicles to counter the Stummel. So um got him in kind of locked in the horns of dilemma there uh i would say um the big thing the officer's quarters is huge continues to be huge right uh vet one for the grid in the years allows you to heal forward and maintain field presence so you merge you heal you keep your high quality team weapons uh ready to go tier three for the pack 40 for the ambush bonus the panzer grenadiers for the the instant win automatic fire capability for the stummel you get the white phosphorus round if you are playing Wehrmacht and you're not investing into officer's quarters, you're doing it wrong, right? It is worth delaying your tech uh, to get the officer's quarters out. It just changes the nature of all the engagements. Um, the last thing for him, though, and I kind of hinted at this, man, he really missed out by not grabbing the Luftwaffe reserves, not using that manpower hack. He ended up not needing it. But like, when is it a bad thing to have a lot of spare manpower? You can get caches. Right, you can uh, build an extra squad, an extra AT gun, buy yourself some space. Um, it's easier to afford some of the like tech officers' quarters upgrades. I mean, that was the and the only other thing I really had for him is like at one point he had 99 of 100 pop cap. You're floating manpower and fuel. Like, why not get the tier four officers' quarters? Like, yeah, you only have two Panzer fours out, but it's not gonna hurt to get them some initial veterancy. Um, so. That, that's kind of, that's really it. That's all I got uh, in terms of general takeaways. I, there's one other thing kind of on the slide here. Um, the mid-game strategy pivot. It It's really tough to tell like when you should pivot versus when you should just hammer home your existing strategy. What you want to do is like give yourself options. And so if you don't, if you do have like a weird tech approach like tier one to tier four, you don't really have the options to pivot mid-game. It's, it's a significant like back tech change in resources to get a motor pool out, et cetera. Um, and so I thought it was interesting. Jeff G decided like mid game, I'm abandoning Rangers. I'm going rifles. Um, and the, the downside is it didn't really work because UMB had Panzer Grenadiers on the field already. Um, and, and so the rifles just kept losing engagements and bleeding. I would say in general, like don't be afraid to pivot. I think more games are lost because people stay in a strategy that's ineffective then uh games that are lost because they tried to pivot to something else but in this case uh jeff g's attempt to pivot was basically punished by umb so um that's really all i got uh outstanding game i i just love how it just kept rocking and rolling shocked that jeff g surrendered when he did i thought maybe he had a chance to get another uh sherman out and try to try to get some wins but i think he had, he had just lost too much so um thanks to both players uh, well done. That's all for us here, and we'll see y'all in the next one.